There's quite a few good young Czech players at the moment as well, as well as yourself. It's a very promising time for Czech players. Uh, Jonas Fortech as well. Yeah, Fortech. Yeah, it's looking good. It's looking good at this moment. Yeah, We are pushing each other. So so I was really lucky that my sister was older and starts the tennis. And I was playing on the wall every tournament when she was when she were playing so i was playing like five hours on the wall and playing <laughs> matches with the wall so it was really <laughs> quite lucky in a way that your sister yeah. was into yeah. tennis otherwise we might not be seeing you in these grands yeah, maybe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back again, tennis fans. Here we are, another Game to Love podcast and another person in quarantine that we're going to be speaking to today, JG. It's exciting, isn't it? I'm loving speaking well, to this another qualifier as well. It's not anyone. It's one of the qualifiers, the ones who have won already three matches prior in Doha. Uh, they're in good form. Yep. All that form, is it going to be out the window because I've had this long break locked in a hotel room? I hope not. I hope not. And this this guy... I think he could prove a lot of doubters wrong. He is exceptional. Obviously, yeah. qualifying for the French Open last year, yep. uh, having an epic match in the first round, and then now qualifying back-to-back for the Australian Open, only 20 years old. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's just crazy. Uh, Thomas Mahach, I believe is the correct pronunciation. I've been trying to do my homework on that one just before he comes in. But uh, yeah, we're expecting him very, very soon. And hopefully, uh, yeah, I don't know if he, I've tried to look for some interviews with him and I couldn't find any. So we might be doing an exclusive uh, Thomas Mahach uh, interview here. And he's I can't only- believe you just dropped the name just like that, Ben. I was bigging it up, trying to let people guess. And you've gone straight in with the jugular and dropped the name. Well, I'm sure the name's in the description. <laughs> yeah. <And> the thumbnail. <laughs> yeah, and the thumbnail might have given it away as well. But yeah, really, really bright prospect on the tour. Someone that we, uh, as you know, if you're a regular listener to the podcast, uh, we talk about this guy all the time. So we're super excited to speak to the guy. So Yeah, and he's also someone who probably doesn't get the media attention, which he deserves. I know we were speaking just before we went live Exactly. Um, about Alcaraz, Massetti. They're sort of always in the limelight, like the big names. We're guilty of it as well. We're always talking about them. This yep. guy, he's kind of in the same breadth. Uh, top player, young guy, and can do it on all surfaces as well. Oh, he definitely can do it on all surfaces. And he's just one of those type of players. Just uh, He seems like a real, real uh, up-and-coming great for me. I mean, I don't want to big him up too much before we've uh, seen him perform, but... He's been beating some really big players and players that we've been bigging up. uh, But we'll we'll talk about more of that uh, when we speak to him on the podcast. Uh, We obviously spoke to Henry Laxanen as well. That was great to uh, get his insight uh, from the the hotel and wonder if he's found that ball yet that he was (laughs) looking for. (laughs) Yeah, but with that, Ben, I think he's here right now. So he's waiting in the wings. We're going to welcome him on. How's it going? I'm okay. What about you guys? Yeah, good mate. We actually had some snow here today. Can you believe it or not? We've been I've been making snowmen today. <laughs> it's really good. It's really good. <laughs> yeah. I more mean, importantly, uh, how are you? Obviously, you're one of the qualifiers. You're in the the strictest conditions out there in Australia right now, locked away in your hotel. How have you been coping? First of all, I would like to say sorry about my English, but uh, I will try my best. And uh, at the Australian Open, now at the moment, it's really tough. We are in hard quarantine and also cannot practice. So, um, yeah, trying my best yeah, and really looking forward that they will push me out and I can pray. Yeah, well. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about your English for a start. Yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, don't Look worry. Look better than my tech. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, no, we're just super excited to uh, have you come on to the podcast just because we had been speaking about you quite a lot uh, over the past few months or the past six months because we yeah. see you as one of the brightest young prospects on the tour because like, you're only 20 now and you're – now into your second Grand Slam main draw. It's incredible. Yeah, it's yeah, it's good. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. No, no, no worries at all. Uh, we uh, we spoke to Henry Laxanen, another one of the qualifiers. Uh, I believe it was a few, a few days ago, and 
Uh, we're quite interested to hear what your side of uh, being locked in, locked up in the in the hotel. Are you locked yeah. in full lockdown? Yeah, we are in full lockdown because somebody in the plane was positive. So the okay. whole plane has to go to the hard quarantine. Uh, yeah, that's not the same. So what have you been up to? You've been up to much in the room? Uh, you've been playing a bit of tennis in the room or anything like uh, that? Yes, uh, I'm doing two, uh, two, twice exercises in the morning okay. and in the afternoon. And after I'm watching in the evening Netflix, speaking with my girlfriend, play PlayStation. So trying, trying to fill the, the time here. So, yeah. Awesome. Moment, what, ga- okay. what, what games are you playing on the PlayStation? Unfortunately, I didn't bring my PlayStation from home. So I bought it on the on the airport, in the airport. Okay. Uh. So there was only two games, Uncharted Spider-Man. And here is not good working the Wi-Fi on the TV. Uh. <clears throat> so I cannot buy the other game. So I play on uh. the Spider-Man, so it's tough, yeah. Uh, yeah. You need a bit of <laughs> Call of Duty. Yeah, Call of Duty yeah. right now is going very well. I've been playing a lot of COD. And... Call of Duty, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Shooting game. Yeah, 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 I've been playing a lot of that. Yeah, it's good. That That's... Warzone, I heard, is uh, yeah, very, Warzone, very popular. Yeah. 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 yeah, I don't play it. I don't play it. Ah, okay. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> what else have you actually been up to? Has it been uh, quite tough, the lockdown for you? Are you feeling like you're... Uh, staying active enough are you able to exercise enough uh you feel like you're gonna be okay to start the tournament yeah here's uh i have a bicycle here <clears throat> so we are okay. trying to do some cardio on it so i think i will be okay but first days was really tough to know that i cannot open the window and uh, the the air is not good here because here is uh, not not good uh, after 10 days, you know, some bacteria is yeah. be here, so it's not good. But yeah, only for five five days, it's okay. Ah, well, that's a, that's a little bit of relief. Yeah, when we were speaking to uh, Henry Laxon, and he said that some of the other players had complained that they couldn't open their windows, and then he checked his one, yeah. and his one did open. But then he said that there was huge spider's webs outside the window, so he closed <laughs> it again straight away. <laughs> So are you able to uh, stick to your strict diet? What type of food have you been eating in quarantine? We got uh, the hotel food for free, but sometimes it's not good. So we can order Uber Eats, whatever whatever we want. So that's good. I can order whatever, what I want. That's good. Oh, perfect. Nice. Uh, how clear were all of the uh, the rules and regulations? And uh, was there anything that surprised you about the quarantine since you've been in Australia? I think it's really strict that I think we have to ask for everything. Like I would like to have, uh, I don't know, the vacuum cleaner. And yeah. it took like one day they would like to discuss it, think about it, they can say yes or no. And after I get it, so that is good that I have the vacuum cleaner that I can breathe. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's uh, this is a tough and just I I was so positive for COVID at twenty December last year, so okay. I probably cannot be positive one more time. So if I go, I think I cannot be positive again. So. I just go to the hospital because I a little bit bad move with my ankle. So it's good at the moment. So okay. yep. uh, it was just for three days. I, but at, at the moment, doesn't matter. So I go to the hospital to just scan it if not broken. So uh, uh, it was really thing. Everybody was like, oh, he's, he's out. So they pushed me to the, um, to the car to take me to the hospital. But it was really strict. Everybody in the floor was looking at me like I was, uh, I was, uh, yeah. uh, you know, radioactive or something like this. <laughs> so everybody was looking like what? <laughs> so it was really funny because I know the Australia is really strict here because they have no, yeah. actually now something a little bit, but no, no positive. So I understand they worry about the COVID, the, the whole country for since uh, March. So I understand them. So just for me, from the European guy, it's uh, quite a f- funny thing now. They, yeah, uh, more importantly, how's your ankle now? 20, uh, yeah, 
it's uh it's good i can normally everything i can do it's not it's okay it was okay, brilliant. So it's obviously it something what can be a bit of a worry as well for yourself being locked in the hotel room you probably not be able to do the same physiotherapy what you'd usually be able to yeah. do uh, yeah. So it's important to try and make sure that it doesn't uh, swell up at all, cause any yeah. issues when you go back to playing. So, what, yeah. are you doing anything differently to sort of uh, manage that? Uh, yeah, I'm doing like uh, the normal treatment. What can I do myself? So, uh, yeah, but I need some therapies, or I need, I yeah, uh, the, yeah the last pass the end of the need. So, uh, but it's okay. I can I can handle it. Oh, yes, yeah, soldier fair, through, yeah. soldier through. That's what we like to hear. It'd be great to, uh, yeah, speak about. Obviously, you had a fantastic qualifying. Uh, you you knocked out. Well, you went through straight sets in all of your qualifying matches, uh, in fairly easily as well, and against some really good players. Especially the the last guy that you beat was a uh, Mikhail uh, Torpgard. I thought the last one was super impressive. Six two, six one. <laughs> uh, never in doubt really and you're just some of the tennis you've been playing from the back end of last year into this year it's just been the highest of levels and it really sort of begs the question how far can you go <laughs> yeah i think the the third match was uh, i think my best match what i've played i play a really good match i think i lost just two two mistakes i made from two sets so yeah it was a really good <laughs> match really good yeah match. No. Yeah, it was yeah, it was super impressive because he's uh, well, he's a, in and around the same sort of uh, ranking as yourself as well, yeah. and to beat yeah. him so convincingly uh, is it super impressive. Uh, you would you say that you're favouring hard court more than clay court, or are you just as happy to play on both surfaces? Mm, probably, I like more hard court, but by, I play also good on the clay. So I don't know, but I like hard. Because for me, I think it's not easy. Like I mean, about the serving, but uh, on the clay, it's more about the fitness. So I like the hard court better. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> you get the it's run a around. Bit easier. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, well, watching your style of play as well, you're like a very, very aggressive player on the court, and uh, uh, even watching that match, if we went back to your match versus Taylor Fritz when you played him at the French Open, which was, well, considering it's your first Grand Slam and you take him to five sets in your in the first match, I thought... That, a tad yeah. unlucky, really, to lose. Yeah, and you you beat him convincingly in the sets that you beat him as well. It wasn't They weren't even close, the uh, third and fourth sets. Yeah. So uh, it was really impressive, just the, the tactics and just the, the amount of power that you have. Like, is that always been something that's been part of your game from like when you were younger, or is it something that you've sort of grown into a bit more as you've got a bit older in your game? Uh, first of all, when I was playing first time match for three sets winning, uh, it was tough to think about the match, what I will do, what will be my tactic, because I really don't know what what will be three sets to win. So first yeah. set, I was a little bit nervous, a little bit, uh, I don't know how to say, not wasting uh, my energy. So yeah. yeah, I lost 7-5, five, five, no, I think 7-5 was first set, or 7-6, I really don't know. 7-5, yeah. Yeah, 7-5, second set was 7-6. So really unhappy that I lost two sets ro- row. So it was zero two, and then I would like to say, oh, okay, I f- it. Sorry, <laughs> I, have to play this. I will try my best. Yeah, and it looks also good. I was it was like six one six two. I play really well, really well. And yeah. the fifth set was like, so what now? I will keep co- continue, but the Taylor Fritz really shocked me from the beginning. He turned different tactic for me and it was la- zero free so i was saying yeah. oh wow what now it's last set it's zero free what now yeah so i tried my best on the, on the finish on the the set it was i think three six just one break i lost there yeah. but it was yeah. a really good match no yeah it was, a, it was a fantastic match to watch as well and i think it really put you on the map for a lot of play uh, people and fans of tennis who don't necessarily watch a lot of challengers uh, me and Ben, we watch a lot of the Challenger Tour and we enjoy that. We've, we've already seen you on there, uh, smashing it up, obviously, notably winning that Challenger against uh, beating van der Zanslup in the final, who's another really exciting top talent. Yeah. 
Um, Thank you. Yeah, so that was amazing doing that. How was that playing him? Uh, when the Zatsu, the final. Yeah. Uh, it was it was interesting because I lost with him two times before. So I was going to the match that I will try. I will put everything there and we will see if I win or not. And also I start really well. I break him and I won a set with one break, 6-4. And then uh, it was like uh, four all in the second set. We keep our serving. So yeah, he break me there on the, f- on the I, don't f- I think at five four. So I lost the yeah. set. And then the third set, I I didn't have any any ideas what to do. Just play, play, play. And <laughs> yeah, I, I won the set and just enjoying the game in the first set. Yeah. Wow. It was incredible. Yeah, I mean, such a great player as well to be playing against. He's yeah. another player who is, he's really sort of uh, now coming into like the top of his level at the moment. Um, yeah. You see, he's obviously another person who's a qualifier as well. And uh, he's uh, somebody we think could uh, potentially be breaking the top 100 as well, like as we think so for yourself as well in, yeah. the, in the very near future. Uh, what, like when you're playing somebody like him, he has such a huge serve. It's like a quite big game. Like, how how do you like adjust your tactics for playing somebody like that? Because yeah, he's a, a very awkward player to play. Uh, he play really fast. He play really fast. So I think I cannot play fast as him. <laughs> so I'm really unhappy that I can play faster than him. But I think if I would play really good, we can play similar fast too. Yeah, okay. So he play really fast, and also his serve is really fast. So yeah, just just playing, and uh, I have to really good moving on the court that I would like to beat him. So I think about the moving; it will be against the Bortek. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean it's a. Uh... Very impressive. Uh, also, uh, I, we were looking just before you were coming on at uh, the, the the Czech rankings, and uh, you're yeah, actually a few of them. yeah. There, there's a there's a quite a few good young Czech players at the moment as well, as well as yourself. Yeah. You obviously got uh, Michael Vabrensky. He's uh, yeah. another very very good young, and uh, Yuri Leheka as another player we've been talking yeah. about. Like, it's a very promising time for Czech. Uh, players. Jonas young, for Czech as well. Yeah, for a yeah, it's looking good. It's looking good at this moment. Yeah. What yeah. do you think the key for that is? Why do you think there's so many uh, young Czech players coming through? And did you know these guys uh, in the juniors? Yeah, we know uh, we know each other from the juniors, but uh, we wasn't. I think somebody wasn't too good. As uh, I uh, also when I was a junior, I wasn't too good. I was like twenty in the world, so that is not actually too good. But uh, yeah, we are pushing each other. So I think that's the key that we are every time pushing. If somebody has a good result, so they would like to push more. Also, if they have good result, I would like to push more. So I think we are pushing yeah. pushing each other. So that is good, and uh, I I can say that we have a good relationship. We are not like uh, hate each other. So <laughs> that's always good. good. It is good. It is good. <laughs> Healthy to have competition, though, especially if it's within your own country and with your like sort of your own friends as well. But yeah. do you have do you have a sort of because obviously the number one in Czech and has been for some time is Yuri Vesely, and uh, what a great player he is. Yeah. Do you uh, have a goal or uh, in your career or for maybe just for twenty twenty one of like a ranking you want to achieve by the end of the year? I don't have any ranking. ranking no? goals. I no. have like uh, my goals for for this year was to play every Grand Slam qualies. So I already made that I can play. Hopefully, if nothing change, I can play uh, Roland Garros, Wimbledon, U.S. Open, probably the qualies. So my goals will be to make the make how many possible to qualify to the main draw. So that is my goal. No, that's like awesome. Many, and and many, if you can yeah. play, if you do the, the Wimbledon qualifiers, that would be amazing as well. Obviously, Wimbledon yeah. in the UK is probably our favourite Grand Slam. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we just would love to see it go ahead this year. Obviously, all this Corona stuff just causing so many problems. Yeah. But what is your game like on grass? It's not something we've seen before. 
I played uh, just one time on the grass, the juniors with Bladen, so I like the grass. I actually good moving on that, so that is my uh I don't know how to say in English the word, but it's good for me to play on the grass. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean I it's, like yeah, it. it's quite a quick surface as well. I think it suits your game quite a lot. You're you're a very good all round player as well, so I think that type of surface, yeah, would really suit you down to the ground. Hopefully yeah. we could see yeah. you in a Wimbledon main draw. That would be uh, exciting would be for really, us as well. Really nice. In the all white. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> No, it'd be perfect. And uh, like something that we asked uh, uh, Laxanen as well was, uh, are you going to be uh, sort of standing by waiting for this first round draw? And uh, are you going to be watching the draw? Are, are you able to see it? And uh, is there anybody that you'd particularly like to play in the first round? Uh, actually, I would like to have it like surprise. So I... I don't want. I don't want to play with uh, that one or that one. I just wait for the draw every time the same. Also at the Australian Open, so yeah, we will see against who I will play. But uh, I really don't wish anybody. We will see. Yeah, for, for Laxon, his only criteria was just avoid the top ten. He wants to avoid <laughs> the top ten, and then he's happy apart apart from that. <laughs> uh, actually, I really don't want to play against top ten because I would like to have a little bit I didn't finish yet so I would like to play more matches that I can so yeah. if I would like to play against the top 10 it could be the third round again uh, maybe it that would be, be nice, nice. yeah be nice. for sure yeah the first I, I round, know. actually I don't want <laughs> Wait, I was saying I, I was saying to uh, Henry I thought uh, would it not be uh, more ideal if you came up against another person who was in full lockdown maybe like that's like at least it's a level playing field you're playing yeah. with somebody who's had no training either, rather than somebody who's been five hours a day, maybe. But I'm okay about, like, if I don't play 14 days, but I, I do fitness, so I, I don't lose uh, the, the the fitness, Yeah, yeah. the condition. So uh, I'm okay if I will play, like, three or four days before the tournament, and after I think I can play my best tennis. So for oh, me, brilliant. three days is okay. Yeah. yeah, so I'm okay with that. Ah, that's what we like to hear. <laughs> that's, that's perfect. Well, we'll be hoping that you, uh, yeah, draw, uh, get a good draw in that first round, and then we can hopefully see you uh, progress and get into, uh, yeah, if we can get yeah. to into a third round. That'd be unbelievable. And uh, yeah, nice, yeah. man, we're yeah. going to be flying the Czech Republic flags for every match you're playing. <laughs> hopefully, you can get all the way and do and win all the matches. Um, but in the <laughs> more uh, immediate future, obviously, you're going to be let out Saturday, I believe. Is that right? Uh, yeah, uh, I think Saturday in the morning, actually. That's good. So I have okay, Saturday, nice. Sunday, Monday, probably we can play on Tuesday the matches. The preparation, oh, brilliant. You know. That's good. Yeah, three days, it's okay. Do you so, have so a plan? Have you got anything lined up for then? Uh, actually, here, I don't plan it because it can change everything. So... <laughs> Um, I, we will see on the Saturday what we can do, but hopefully we can play just one time. So I think two hours we can play. Hopefully on Saturday we can use uh, the fitness. So yeah, we will see. And I will do some therapies also after 14 days in the same room. I will be really happy that I can say outside and breathe normally. <laughs> yeah, for, well, for sure. If you've not got a window, it's the main to... goal for Saturday. <laughs> It's just to get out and breathe. Yeah, well, that's a good goal to start with. It's uh, baby steps, yeah. they say. Baby yeah. steps, yeah. The one thing I must say, it's good to see you in such good spirits. Um, some people, they can get quite down being locked away, but it looks like you're very positive. Uh, you're doing, you're making the most of it right now. And I think the PlayStation is yeah. probably helping that. Yeah, it's helping a lot. But also, <laughs> it's really good to speak with my girlfriend. So, yeah, that's good. Oh, that's but it's great that you've uh, yeah you're lucky you've got the Wi-Fi and you're able to uh, yeah. c connect with uh, family friends obviously yeah. girlfriend as well. Uh, yeah. I w I wanted to uh, just ask a question. Obviously, this is the first time we've spoken to you. Quite interested about your background and uh, what what sort of got you into tennis and like uh, how like what was your progression from like when you uh, were growing up? Was that the main sport you were playing or did you just come across tennis in another way i started to play tennis uh, when i was five years old 
because uh, my sister was starting also, but she was older. She was like 14. So okay. the parents didn't know that they we can play the tennis. So I was really lucky that my sister was older and starts the tennis because I, I think I will not start the tennis. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so she was traveling for the tournament in Czech. And I was when I was younger, I was traveling with her and with parents. And I was playing on the wall every tournament when she were she, when she were playing. So I was playing like five hours on the wall and play <laughs> matches with the wall. So it was really <laughs> funny. I start like that, and after the parents saw me that I play good, so they uh, they give me some money that I can play uh, at the club near near my uh, near my city. So I was playing there from uh, I don't know seven years old, eight years old, I think seven to nine. And uh, somebody saw me from the Prague, the main the main city. So I was practicing from nine years old at the Prague, like one one day per week. Yeah. So yeah, and after going going more more more, and I stay in the Prague. So I was playing at Sparta at the moment. So I played ten years at Sparta. And now I'm traveling to the Prague every day. So yeah, that was my oh. beginning. Wow, oh, awesome. sounds like a real. Uh, it was a very fortunate and quite lucky in a way that your sister yeah. was into yeah. tennis. Otherwise, we might not be seeing you in these grands. Yeah, maybe. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and I think really playing with the wall was good practice because if you do come against uh, really a Novak Djokovic, you never <laughs> know. You've already had a bit of experience. The wall, Novak Djokovic, is very similar. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really similar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was I was gonna say, did you get any victories against the wall or? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it was really tough, but I never beat it. <laughs> ah. Ah, me neither. Me neither. <laughs> but I try my best. <laughs> <laughs> no, did did no. you used to have when you were growing up? Did you have a player who you always looked up to, like the guy who you wanted to maybe uh, be like one day, or someone who really inspired you in tennis? Um, actually, when I was younger, I have like I was watching uh, every match uh, Nadal, Federer, Djokovic, Wawrinka. Every time I was watching the TV, I liked I like it a lot. And yep. after when I was uh, older, like twelve to fifteen, I had like little bit dark space there that I wasn't looking for tennis. I was looking for football. So yeah. I wanted to play football, so I had dark spaces there. So my tennis wasn't uh, too good. So, yeah, and after after 15, I was really lucky that I played with a good good coach who gave me the the motivation, the stability, everything. So that it was really lucky for me that I have, like, I don't know how to say, the hard coach, you know? Yeah, the really tough, hard. tough coach. Yeah, the strict. tough coach, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so... It was my beginning, yeah. And after 15, I was playing better, better, better. Yeah, and I mean... It's amazing. So. Them four players you've mentioned, they're still playing right now. And they're still playing at a very good level as well. Yeah, Is it yeah. weird having, like, idols who used to watch on the TV and now you're playing and potentially they're, they're the other side of the court playing against you? Yeah, it's, it's really nice. It's really nice that, 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 that guys play such a good tennis at the, the moment. So it's really, yeah. really... It's unbelievable what they, what yeah. they improve. Have you had much uh, chance to meet any of the the big names on the tour face to face? Yeah, uh, the Roland Garros. First time I was in the in the draw with uh, Nadal, Djokovic. Uh, so it was with team also. It yeah. was really good. It was really good feeling. So I'm really happy that I can do it again at the Australian Open. So yeah, it would be really nice that if something happen good so i can play them against the against them like second second round the third round will be really nice it, it can be who knows we've seen obviously lucas rosso he's been a one check player to upset rafael nadal at wimbledon yeah. uh, it's an incredible match which i don't think we'll ever yeah. forget maybe it's yeah. going to be your turn next <laughs> to upset one of the big... really good match oh it was amazing yeah. And one thing you touched on a second ago, I know you said you played a bit of football yourself. Are you into football? Do you watch much football? Because for me, I'm uh, I'm, I'm from near London, so I'm a West Ham fan. Yeah. And right now, Czech Republic with West Ham is crazy. Two of our best yeah. players, we've got Vladimir Kufau and uh, Thomas Suchek. They're really ripping yeah. it up in the Premier League right now. Do you have yeah. any uh, favourite players or teams? 
Actually, when I was 12 to 15 to 16, I was watching football every day. I was a really big fan. But now it go a little bit less. And now I really like the tennis. So I'm watching tennis a lot. <laughs> and also I like a basketball. Okay. Basketball. But football, I know a uh, lot of players. But now there are some younger guys, yeah, I think, from in England. Yeah. The names, I really don't know at the moment, the football. I'm sorry. For, for West Ham, there's two big ones. You've got Kufa and uh, Suchek, Thomas Suchek. Thomas Suchek, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know more. Fresh air. West Ham was not very good. And honestly, since we've had them two, we're improving <laughs> drastically. We're winning a lot of games, so it's good. Yeah. Oh, like. All I can remember is just the older players, like your Carol Paborskis and these type of yeah, players. Yeah, dead guys I know, dead guys I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, like, yeah, I don't yeah, know the. Yeah. yeah, I don't know the new guys. No, unfortunately not. I, but I'm just a, strictly tennis these days for me for uh, sport or UFC. I like watching a good fight. <laughs> <laughs> So you saw yeah. the McGregor? Oh, mate! What happened? What happened? I watched it. I watched it this morning. He got knocked out by Dustin Poirier. Yeah. I said it. I said to you, JG. I said to you. You yeah, were like you McGregor to win. I was like, don't be so sure. I, didn't even I thought it'd be quite simple, but it definitely wasn't. Um, he's not fought for a while, so Poirier is so good. So, did you watch the fight? Uh, just a highlight. It was really good. Yeah, I'll, well, the highlights was the whole fight. Pretty much. It was only about six minutes long, I think. Oh, really? Just <laughs> yeah, it was, one, it was one round and then about a minute into the second round. Oh, good. Finished him off, didn't they? Yeah, he completely destroyed his leg with leg kicks and then he couldn't move and then he just beat him up and punched him in the face. But really, I, actually, I, didn't be, I don't want to be 10 seconds in the cage with the same guys. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. Probably I couldn't run. I cannot run ten seconds on the pitch. <laughs> I think I think tennis is a lot more friendly. Huh? The only problem is if you're playing against someone like a Benoit pair, then you need to be what be careful of his racket. Yeah. It could come flying any moment. Well, you never know. Medvedev as well. He's offering pe- fights out to people as well on court. I remember yeah. rightly. Yeah. It's quite actually going on from that. Uh, uh, quite nicely. Is there like one player that uh, you? actually just like to watch as just a fan of just like tennis is there somebody that you if they're playing you will always watch that player they like your favorite to watch on tv um, i can say that if i watching on the federal it's every time it's something special yeah, yeah. well yeah it's unique isn't it but i can say nadal djokovic but the federal i think he plays a different tennis really you don't know what he he will play that's good yeah do you like the single-handed backhand yeah then also the drop shots or the volleys the half volleys yeah it's, it's got the lot <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <everything>, yeah. <laughs> an aggressive game as well which is similar yeah. well obviously you like the aggressive style of tennis which uh yeah, i like that's what makes him so popular as well. I mean, that's what's given Djokovic some negative press is just because he's like a brick wall. You can't you he you beat yourself sometimes yeah. because you yeah. you can't beat him. Uh, but Federer has been famous for just wiping players off the court by hitting winners, and that's what yeah. people want to see ultimately. Yeah, and that's what you'll be known for as well as as we've seen <laughs> on that match with Taylor Fritz you were sma- in those in that fourth and uh, yeah third and fourth set they were just flying yeah. past him yeah. so it was really good yeah yeah let's make but that I happen so. yeah well exactly exactly let's make that happen again in this Australian Open yeah hopefully we will see <laughs> <laughs> well but anyway i think we'll wrap it up there we've been speaking to you for a long for a long enough now uh, thank you so much for your time, Thomas. We we'll let you thank get you. on with your busy thank day you. in your hotel room, on your <laughs> cycle, on your little bike, and your pit PlayStation. Uh, and we wish you, you so the best of luck in the tournament. We'll be cheering you on every single match, hoping you advance and thank keep you. winning. Um, and hopefully your ankle's okay too. Yeah, it's perfect. It, uh, it's it's good. Thank you so much. Uh, no so. worries, Thomas. Thanks for joining us, and uh, we wish you the best. Thank you so much, you too, guys. Thank you for Cheers, inviting mate. me to your stream. No yeah, problem. No worries. So Let's do it again sometime. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much. Cheers, Thank mate. you. you take care. Bye.